to introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Dave Hopkins. I'm Mark Johnson. And this is our project for ITM 455 Information Security. And, and in this one, we, we've taken uh, some C Sharp code uh, <coughs> that, that started out on uh, Stack Overflow, and uh, we've incorporated the class into a, a brief program to demonstrate how it works. Um, and, and so we'll go through and we'll kind of explain the program. Mm -hmm. So first off, the program itself, when it executes, what you're going to see is it's basically going to ask you for a string to encrypt. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to print out the SHA hash value. I've got, it's going to do it twice, one for the 32-byte mm -hmm. hash and one for 64-byte hash. These are the 256-bit or 512-bit. So it's going to create those two hash strings. And then it's going to create a simple AES, and this was the code that we got from the... Um, from uh, Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow. Yep. <coughs> which is in this program over here, and we'll get to that. So it creates a new one, and then it's going to create the string to... get the string to encrypt, which is what we had entered up here. And then it's going to encrypt that string, and then decrypt it, and then we're going to display all the data. So we're going to print everything out. And this is basically the print everything out. So we're going to print out what was what we got, the hash 256, the hash 512, the AES key that is generated every time that we create a new um, instance of this uh, simple AES object. It creates a new key. And then the cipher text, so with that unencrypted string, this is going to be encrypted text. And then we'll decrypt it and we'll show that it decrypts back to what it was. <coughs> And then we've got our, our output. Right. And the way that works, and so when we come into the hashing, it's really simple. Both the 256 and the 512 are basically the same. It's just a different uh, instance of an object that we're using. So we just get an empty string. We get an instance of the SHA-256 managed object. We take our string, that was the text that was input, and we convert that to a byte array. And then we pass that byte array into the SHA hash, which then computes the hash value for that byte array. And then we take that byte array and we basically format that back into a string, and then that's what we return. Does the same thing for the 512. Takes the input string, gets the 256 or 512 managed object, converts the string to a byte array, computes the hash, converts the hash back to a string, returns the string. In the simple AES, uh, we come in here, we create, the first thing we do is we call generate new encryptors, which is this function right here. And this is one that I did where basically we're going to create a, a key and a vector. We're going to get a random object out there. And we're going to randomize bytes for the key and for the vector. And so this, this random object basically fills in the bytes for the key and the vector with random numbers anywhere from uh, 0 to 255. <coughs> and then we create a new, what is it? And I can't pronounce this guy. <laughs> I, I go with uh, Rendell. That's what I go Rendell? Yeah. We'll go with Rendell. Sounds, sounds Rendell good. managed <laughs> object uh, in which we pass the key and the vector. In fact, I should probably be like, we create the, get a Rendell managed object, and we pass it the key and the vector to create an encryptor object. And then we pass it the same key and the vector to create a decryptor object. And these are the objects that are used to encrypt and decrypt the text. If you used a different key or vector one, then you're just going to get gibberish. Yes. <laughs> so you have to use the same one. For and that's where you would have somebody, you know, say Mark was sending me something encrypted, he would use the encryptor and send it to me, and I would have to have the same key and vector to create my decryptor in order to create decrypt it. That's how simple AES works. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then these are just support functions to actually do the actual encryption or decryption. And the real root of it is right in here for transform. That's where we have to create a memory stream object. We go through, create a crypto stream object with that memory string, and we write the uh, encrypted text, uh, the byte array, to that memory stream. <clears throat> and this flush final block is just that's just finishes it. And so this goes through and actually with the memory stream does the actual transformation uh, using the keys 
and creates that encrypted or decrypted text. It's used to go either direction. Though. So if you take a crypto inf crypto text and pass it into this, then it's going to return the unencrypted clean t plain text. Okay. So let me come back to the program. We can actually run this. Pop up here in just a It'll minute pop or so. Up. There we go. We'll go ahead and just extend it so we can do a few different examples. And the first basic example we're going to do is zero through or one through zero and then one through six. So like zero, one through sixteen, like it was a credit card number. Mm -hmm. or something. Yes, yeah, sixteen digit number. So sixteen digit number. <coughs> we go to encrypt it. So this was the input. This was the SHA two fifty six hashed value for that value. This is the SHA-512 hashed value. You can see it's twice as long. This is 32 bytes, this is 64 bytes. And then the AES key and the vector that were, that were generated were right here, I'm displaying those. And then this is the encrypted text. So it took this text with the generated key that, or hash that came out here and created this cipher text. And then when we passed, told it to decrypt it, say it correctly decrypted that text. And the nice thing, this will work with any text. So you can put in, you know, Mark and David. And here is our SHA hash values for those and the keys that were generated. This is the encrypted text. And then see it decrypted the text right. But. And you can, you can see the, uh, the, the hash values and the and the key and vector values are hexadecimal, uh, which <clears throat> adds adds to the uh, level of security uh, in, in this particular encryption example. Right, and then what I can show you here is we'll go back through and do that first 16-digit number. And we'll go ahead and run it through again, and you'll see if you look at the the SHA hash values, those are the same. 419 over here, 419, the uh, 37A43, 37A43. So when you take a text and you encrypt or you, you hash it using an algorithm, it's always going to come out with that same hashed value. But the nice thing with algorithms is that you cannot take that algorithm without knowing the, the key and decrypt it back to this. There's no way you can tell that this is actually this value. And that's what the AES key does. So here's the key that was generated, um, which is different than this one. The crypto text that for this was different because it used a different key. But still, when he decrypted it, it came back to the correct value. And that's how simple AES encryption works. Easy enough.